The Shaper Origin relies on a lot of software and a few key technologies, augmented reality and computer vision. Origin uses fiduciary markers on the work surface and a camera to track the machine's location within that area. Its view of the world is augmented by your SVD drawings, allowing you to virtually place your files directly on the material to be cut. The Origin works amazingly well. The tolerances are certainly within the range you need for woodworking. So as a designer, the question is, what should you know about the Shaper Origin? Before getting the Shaper Origin, I built myself a 4 foot by 4 foot gantry style CNC machine. There are some advantages to a machine like this. Obviously, it takes the human error out of the cutting process. I can also do sculptural cuts with a gantry style router that you just can't do on the Shaper Origin. On the flip side, the gantry CNC machine requires more upfront work and planning. Not only do I have to build my parts in CAD, I also have to calculate the feeds and speeds. This takes longer and requires more knowledge than you need to work with the Shaper Origin. Often a gantry router is going to require a dedicated resource and a lot of training. Program your gantry router wrong, and you'll be diving for the emergency stop button. If you're in a production environment, a high quality gantry router will outform the Shaper Origin, but if you're making one-off designs and need to cut parts you just can't fit into a gantry router or even your shop, this is where the shape of origin starts to shine. I can quickly draw up a simple drawing and be cutting in a few minutes. When I built my gantry CNC machine, I had to decide how big to make it. I chose a cut area of four feet by four feet because I wanted the option to cut both large parts and small parts. With the shape of origin, you don't have to make these kind of compromises. I'm only limited by the size of the material and how much tape I have on hand. If the origin had been available a couple of years ago, I might have opted for it and a much smaller gantry CNC machine to cut small sculptural work. When space is a premium, there's a lot to be said for a product that fits on a shelf versus one that takes up a quarter of my shop. Software updates. As I said earlier, at the heart of the shape of origin, there's a lot of software. Within two months of the launch, there's already been a software update or two. The new releases add some much needed features. You can now scale your drawings in the tool and have better control over the grids. Shaper says there's a lot more software updates to come. Not only are there several tutorials on shapertools.com, there's also access to the Shaper Hub. The Hub is a collection of projects from beginners to more adventurous users. It includes cool gift ideas and useful products both for your home and the shop. The most important project in the Shaper Hub, and one that is a must-build item, is the Vertical Workstation. The Vertical Workstation creates a work surface for the origin that allows you to plant material vertically. The question you might be asking is, how do I align the shape of origin to the material accurately? This is one of the key features of the origin that makes it easier to use than my gantry CNC machine. The grid feature of the origin allows you to use the bit as a probe to find two perpendicular edges of your material. And from those two edges, you can define a grid that you can use to align your drawings. For the most accuracy, you can install the bit upside down. The shank of the bit has a consistent diameter and it makes it more accurate when probing the edges of the material. In my experience, it's best to always define a grid. The reason is that the grid allows you a reference point that you can use to bring in multiple drawings and align them to each other. To accurately place material on a gantry CNC, I have to align the material to the machine. The Shaper solution of bringing the tool to the material is much easier to wrap your head around. The value of portability can't be underestimated. There are some things I just can't move into my shop and even if I could, they might not fit under the gantry CNC machine. Ease of use and a scalable workspace are huge benefits provided by the Shaper Origin. The quality of the cuts and the hand of a skilled operator are excellent. Combined, these attributes do something greater than the sum of their parts. They inspire confidence and imagination. When a project comes your way, you're not thinking of the obstacles. You're thinking of the possibilities, and that is huge. It's not because of one killer feature, with the orchestration of hundreds of small things that have come together to make this product. I am a fan, if you can't tell by now. But there are some downsides. You can't use really large bits, for example. The lack of 3D carving is a big issue for many people, including me. Even carving simple flat cuts with a hole larger than the base of the origin can be a challenge, if not a bit dangerous. Also, the origin requires more manual labor than a gantry CNC machine. Over the long term, it's slower. Even with the less upfront design work on the computer and the smaller learning curve, you just can't outrun a gantry CNC machine running 150 inches per minute. 
In a production environment, a gantry CNC machine wins hands down, day in and day out. But I'm not in a production environment, and to some degree, I enjoy the manual labor. I think there's still a place for a gantry CNC machine in my shop, but I don't think I need one as big as the one I have. I could be happy with a smaller gantry CNC machine for creating sculptural details and relying on a shaper for things that it does well, which I've found is a lot. Tips. If you have a shaper origin or intend to buy one, here are some things you should know. One, don't cheap out on shaper tape. It's not cheap, but neither is your time or the material you're cutting. When the origin gets lost, it has the potential to make mistakes. Number two, as I said before, lighting matters. Many of the issues I've had with the shape of origin are due to lighting conditions in my shop. It pays to have good lighting. Three, if you need to use an extension cord, make sure it's a good one and as short as possible. An issue I had early on was that I was using a really long extension cord. This caused the origin to think the spindle was off when it was not. And if you're like me and think you've broken your machine somehow, it can cause a lot of undue stress. Number four, always use grids. I know I'm repeating myself, but they are a great feature and can save you a lot of headaches later. Number five, join the Shaper community. There are a number of active users and employees who are very helpful. It's a great place to learn and share your experiences. What else should you know about the Shaper origin? What would you build? Add your comments below.